Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're gonna learn to play Belote Manier. Before anything, by the way, I'm gonna assume in this video that you're already quite familiar with similar trick-based games uh, like Bridge or other versions of Belot. Uh, there is another vi video where I go much more into details of the main concept. Here we're gonna we're gonna go over the concepts uh, uh, quickly, and we're gonna get very practical directly by playing a, a whole game. That being said, as you can see, we don't need a lot to get started. Ballot Manier, in contrast to other versions of the game, is actually played only with two players. It makes the game very dynamic and very fun and very simple to, to set up. You just grab a standard deck of cards, you get rid of all the cards before the seven, and let's go. So when you come on the app, you can see here by clicking the button that there is all the information you need to get up and running quickly. That's what we're gonna do in this tutorial. We're first gonna go over like the concept so that you have everything in mind. And then we're gonna go over a whole game and I'm gonna show you how to think about the game, how to approach it, and hopefully maybe try to win. So like any trick game, the object of playing Ballot Manier is just to make as many points as possible. And you do that through the fundamental mechanism that is the trick. In Belot, what is interesting is that you have two point systems. You have the trumping system and you have the no trumping system. So how do you determine whether you're playing at the trump or at the no trump? In other words, how do you determine what is the point system of the game that you're playing? You do that with the contract. We always start a game of Belot with two rounds of biddings. Every player can bet on a contract up until the two players settle on the final contract, contract when there is no more bidding. We always start with the lower contract, which is the, the clubs, and we can only go up from there up until the tuta two, which is the old trumps. How do we connect the contract to the point system that I showed you right before? Well, if one decides to play in a specific trump, what you would effectively have is the trump that's defined by the trumping point system. For instance, if you decide to play hearts, you would have the jack of heart, the nine of heart, and so on in this trumping point system. Whereas you would have the rest of all the suits in the no trump system. If you were to play no trumps, all trumps, you would have all the suits in either one of the systems. Now, the interesting thing comes from the trumping mechanism. Trumping basically changes the fundamental dynamic of the trick. In a normal trick, you always have the second player or the player countering the plea always obligated to play a suit that is similar to the card that the first player played. But with the trumping mechanism, when you play a trumping suit, like clubs, diamond, heart, and spade, what you're effectively saying is that the cards that belong to the trumping suit will allow you to win the trick. We're gonna see that uh, in practice uh, when we play the game. A very important thing that I haven't mentioned yet is what happens when you win and lose, depending on whether you're the one who settled the contract or not. If you're the last one to talk or the last one to bet on the contract before it gets settled, in other words, if you're the one choosing that you would play Spade or anything else, and you manage to win the game afterwards, what happens here is you win the difference of the points that you and your opponent makes, right? So a moderate amount of points. But if you were to settle the contract and not win the game, you lose all the points. In other words, you lose the sum of the points that your opponent and that you made overall. So betting on a contract, even though it puts you at a very advantageous uh, position, right? Because you're effectively saying, okay, let's play this version of the game because it suits my, games, my, my game better. What it also does is put a tremendous amount of pressure on you to win the game because if, you're, if you don't win it, you, you, use a pr you lose a pretty big amount of points. So that's to keep in mind all the way as you play the game. A final concept that's fundamental to getting started at the game is the concept of declarations and announces. While a declaration is declared, as its name says, before the start of the game, right after the contract has been settled, the announces are actually played during the game. Again, we're going to see that in practice. For now, it's enough to understand the basic concept, which is 
a declaration entails any cards that are played within the trump and that follows each other starting from at least three cards basically in a row. The announcers are basically the eponymous Bullard Rubberlot system. The way you would go about getting the 20 points for having a Bullard and a Rubberlot would be by having the two cards in the trump that has been settled in the contract and playing first a king while announcing that you are playing the king. In other words, just saying it out loud, Bullard, and playing the queen later, at a later stage, anytime later, it doesn't matter when. Uh, as long as you announce it again and that you say Rubberlot, you would therefore win the 20 points. That's pretty much it. Uh, if I forgot anything, we're going to check that out right now as we play the game. So don't worry too much about it. And let's get started. Okay, so as you can see on the board, we have the announcers and the declaration points uh, of the opponent here. My own points there. Uh, right now, they're standing at zero because we have not yet settled the contract. So we, we have, in theory, like already an idea of the points that we could make, but they're not set in stone. We have the action that the opponent has already taken. As you can see, like uh, the player already started to play clubs, and it's our turn to play. So I'm just going to check out my cards very quickly to know what I'm going to play. I can already see that I have a pretty good hand. I can see that I have 9, the 8, and the 7th of the heart suit. I could potentially uh, have already 20 points starting this game if I manage to settle the contract at heart, no trump, or all trumps. In that same reasoning, I have a Belot Rebelot in my own hand. So this is already pretty strong as well. This is another 20 points. But here's the thing, this is directly like a conflict that I have, right? If I decide to play either the, the hard suit or the spade suit, I would automatically lose the other points, right? Only no trumps or all trumps would potentially yield me the 40, 40 points to start the game. As a side note, if I were to have this queen here in my hand, instead of having it on the face-up cards, like, like you can see here, this would not, I would not be able to count this Ballot Rebelot. You need to have the uh, announces and the declaration points either in your hand or in the board, like the face up cards that you see. All right, so other interesting things about my game is that I can already see that I'm pretty strong at spade, right? I would already have my 20 points of the jack, the uh, 14 points, and the 11 points at the ace. Those are the three strongest cards that you can have in any suit. It basically means that I could put a lot of pressure very quickly on my opponent by attacking maybe his 10 or whatever other cards he could have in, in his hand. In this case, like basically the, the 10, right? I, I could play very aggressively at, at spade. Uh, he has protection, like he has a 7 and the 8, which he could use to protect if he has his 10 in his hand. But as there is like eight cards in each suit, and I have already five of them, plus the two of them here. If he has the 10 in his hand, he would not be able to withstand uh, an attack at spade, basically. And I would make already pretty much all the points that, could be, that can be made at spade. Accepting clubs is a death sentence for me directly. The system changes completely. Instead of having the three strongest card at spade, I only have the ace that, be, uh, that, that stays at 11. I have, and I have my two points here that become two and zero. So pretty much worthless. It's definitely not great. Let's not even talk about the clubs. <laughs> I have a dry king that would get eaten alive directly. I have no protection. I would not be able to, to protect myself against this. So clubs is definitely not an option. The question here is, what do I want to bet? Don't worry too much about it if it's a lot of uh, strategy thinking. We're, we're going to cover that in some videos to come. So here, what I'm gonna do is just bet on spade. I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to lose my twenty points of, at hearts because my 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 game at spade is that strong. Okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, my opponent is actually passing. What passing means in this context is that he uses his second round of betting. Right, he already bet once by betting on clubs, 
Now he's using the second round of, of betting by saying that he wants to stop betting. He just accepts whatever I am uh, saying here. I pass as well and the contract is settled on spade, but it also gives me the opportunity to go to no trumps or all trumps. I don't have a great game at uh, no trumps. I don't have aces. I don't have tens. Well, not a lot of them. And same goes for all trumps. I don't have a lot of jacks. I don't have a lot of nines. Here I'm obligated to forego the 20 points at heart because I'm going to settle on spade. That's the way of the road. There is nothing, nothing to do about it. There is no easy decision at Balot. Uh, I'm going to play spade and we're going to see how it goes. So as you can see, my opponent doesn't waste any second to get right to it. He decides to play uh, queen of diamonds directly and we have the amazing surprise to see that there is an ace of diamond that's revealed in his game. This is a very important card. Unfortunately, he's the one who's getting it. Diamond is not the tr is not the, the trumping suit, so I don't have to play a card that is up in terms of value than the queen of, of diamond. I do, however, have to play a diamond, that's for sure. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the I'm going to take the control. I'm going to play my 10. I'm going to make my 10 points. Uh, I still have one diamond that's protecting my king here. So if it is if he decides to attack with his ace directly, I will have protection and I will be able to probably to make my my four points at a later stage. So I have my 20 points at Belot Robalot. That's fantastic. I have my Jack, my nine and I have ace, my, my ace. I have a decision. I can play this, this game in a few different ways. I could decide to play very aggressively at spade like, like I intended to do so as, well, as, well, as I was discussing the contract. Just try to attack very, very quickly this 10 of spade that could be in his hand. If the 10 of, sp of spade is not in his hand, that would be quite disastrous. Unfortunately, because he has two protection, I would not know if he has it before I, pl I play my three cards. Another strategy would be to play much more defensive, to just chill out a little bit, giving, you know, like giving the control of the game, uh, try to protect my key cards, like my kings that are going to be worth four points. I'm going to think about it for a second. Okay, so after thinking about it, I'm just going to wait a little bit, you know, like no rush. For now, what I want to do is I want to play the king of clubs very, very quickly so that if he has the ace and the ten of clubs, I will be able to trump him very quickly in the game. I give him the control. As you can see, he plays his ace of, of clubs, which basically make, makes sense. He wants to make his points. He doesn't want to get trumped. So now he's playing the seven of clubs. Here, there's no point in trumping for me. The seven is a very low card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in, in the same way that I want to get rid of my clubs so that I can trump afterwards his high cards, I want to do the same thing at, at heart. So I'm going to start playing the low hearts that yield no value for me so that I can potentially try to start trumping his 10 at a later stage. He doesn't know that yet. Maybe he's going to see clearly in my, in my strategy, but let's see. Okay, so he stops playing clubs. So he's probably a little bit, little bit concerned that I don't have a lot of hearts and that I can trump him later. So for now, I have to think he plays um, his ace. Here I just want to make sure that I don't give him too too many points. I'm just going to protect my king as I wanted to do at the very beginning. He now decides to play the seven and that's very interesting. Here he's basically saying, look, I don't have the ten of spade in my hand, so I don't really care about protecting my, my ten or whatever. I'm just going to play the spade and give you the hand. That could be a bluff. I'm not very convinced by this move. I'm just going to take it with my king so that I can play the Belot Robalot. Always play with the king first. And I'm revealing a very beautiful 10 of, of clubs that was hiding behind. Why is this so beautiful? Because now I'm, tep, uh, I'm top card at clubs. They already played the ace. Uh, 10 is the best card that there could be. So I'm very happy about this. I'm not going to play it directly. I'm going to keep it for later so that I can take the hand in a critical moment. Here are a few things that I can do. I can play, first of all, my spade so that at some point I can play my queen of spade. That could reveal here potentially um, a queen of diamond. That would be great uh, to make 20 points. Ah, no, I'm sorry about this. I'm sorry. Like Even, even having a queen of diamond 
uh, would not yield 20 points because we are playing spade, we're not playing diamonds, so Belot Rebelot at diamond would not be worth any points. So now, now I'm gonna play very aggressively at spade. If the 10 is in here, I'm gonna get it. So I'm just gonna attack first. He, he protects himself. Amazing surprise again. We can see that he has the ace of hearts. That's gonna be very, very painful because now he has the two top cards at heart and I still have two low cards at heart. So it means that he's gonna make his, his 21 points, 11 plus 10. Maybe I should have played hearts before attacking at spade. Um, that's that's part of the the hundreds of decisions that you have to take when you play that you have to make when you play Belot. I get a stick with my strategy. Let's see if he has a ten of spade. Yes, he had it. So he was he was bluffing about it. Was it because he precisely wanted to open his game? He didn't want me to to play to play hearts. I don't know. I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna have to think about it at the end of the game. So now there is no point in continuing in continuing to play spade. I'm gonna keep them later for you know trumping at critical moments. For now, I'm just gonna make my pawns at uh, at clubs, and I'm gonna give him back the hands at hearts. As you can see, he makes the ten points of hearts, and he keeps going. That's quite cocky. Like if I was him, I would wait, you know, to make sure that the, there is a last heart that he can that that he can use. That, that he can rely on to make his 11 points. Uh, here he's very lucky, I actually have the, the hearts in my hand, so I cannot trump him. Uh, he's giving me back the, the hands, I'm taking with the king, I'm taking, I'm gonna make my two points with the jack because there is no diamonds left, I'm top card at, at jack. As you can see, he has to give me quite a few points at hearts. I'm gonna give him back the, um, the hand at clubs. I'm gonna trump, I'm gonna make the last diamond and I'm gonna make the last plea, the last trick. That was a whole game, that was a lot. I can imagine if that sounded a, a little bit overwhelming. Uh, here's the thing, we successfully bet at spade. We settled the contract and we managed to go through with it. So we actually want 82 points, this is quite good. Remember, this is the difference between the points that he made in his tricks and we made in our tricks. Uh, obviously, I had a pretty good hand with 20 points, you know, starting 20 points. I made a lot of, of, of tricks. I had a very strong game at spade. So I'm very happy overall with, with the way we played. I hope that you understand the fundamental mechanics of it, that you're excited about getting your hands dirty with it. And I wish you all the best on your journey to become a great ballot player. If you ever want to play against the champions, don't hesitate to send me a message and talk to you soon.